Ahsoka episode five came out last night and it has been super polarizing. The reviews that I've seen are either saying that it is 10 out of 10. It's the best Star Wars we've seen in years. And then the other reviews are kind of sitting there saying this actually wasn't that good. There may have been a few glimmers of hope here, but the episode itself was not great. And the Ahsoka show has been very cut and dry so far. Episodes one, two, and three were boring. They were slow. I did not think that they were very good. I thought they introduced some pretty crazy ideas that realistically just don't fit with Star Wars. Episode four was fantastic. And episode four is the one thing that reminded me when Star Wars is good, it is really good. And then episode five comes along. Some of it's good, some of it's bad. So my intention was to wait until the entire season one of Ahsoka has finished and then really do an episode by episode discussion, breakdown and review of the season. But since episode five is a little bit of everything, it's a little bit good, it's a little bit bad. So I figured this would be a good opportunity to just make a single video about this and talk about it a little bit. But before I get into it, please, if you're here with me, like this video, subscribe to the channel. And usually I would just say, comment down below with something, but I'm very serious about that this time because if there's anything that I've learned from the Ahsoka show is that Star Wars is meant to be viewed and then discussed with a community. I've gotten tons of people saying that they love Ahsoka and they disagree with my takes on it. I've gotten tons of people that are saying Ahsoka's garbage and they're with me all the way, not enjoying the first few episodes. But in this case, I really want to hear what everybody out there thought about this episode. So please comment down below and tell me what your favorite part parts of this episode were, if there was anything that really stood out to you, because there were certainly some things that stood out to me to the point where it really made me think. But anyhow, let's go ahead and let's get into it. The way that I think about Ahsoka episode five, it's almost like a sandwich of good and bad. The beginning of the episode was very boring. The middle of the episode was actually really, really cool. And then the ending of the episode was just kind of stupid. So it's almost like we get some pieces of episodes one through three, where the show itself was just straight up not good. And then we also get some of the really good things that we saw in episode four. And we got some of the really good things that are from some of the movies past that really not only hit us in the nostalgia, but also were really fun to just see on the screen because it's been such a long time. So episode five of Ahsoka starts in a pretty lackluster way where you have Hera and her son Jason walking around. And then he kind of sits there and he says, hmm, I have a bad feeling about this and I don't really see anything. And I wonder what happened here. Hmm, hey mom, can we just close our eyes? and listen to the waves. And if you listen to the waves hard enough, they sound like lightsabers. I wonder what that is. I wonder if that's Ahsoka and who she could be fighting. And then they shut their eyes and then they realize, no, there's something out there and we need to search. And this is all because of Hera's son, Jason. And he says, hey, we need to go and look for Ahsoka, but let's get really close to the waves so we can hear the lightsabers. And then she takes their spaceship and she's flying like feet, just mere feet above the water. And this just reminds me, I'm like, no, she's, a, she's just a straight up bad parent because there are such things is rogue waves. How crazy would that have been if she's in her spacecraft hovering over the water and then just a giant wave hits them and takes them all out? But whatever, that's just me being nitpicky. So I guess what they're setting up is Jason to then become one of the next Jedi because they're demonstrating already that he's super force sensitive. But wait a second, I thought they said earlier in the show that you don't need to be force sensitive in order to be a Jedi. Just anybody can do it with enough training. But anyhow, I'm not here to talk about that nonsense. After we get this, then we finally get into the really good portion of this episode where we see Ahsoka and Anakin finally together again, finishing her training. And that's the very first thing that Anakin says. He says, well, we're here and this is happening because we need to complete the training. And of course he sits there and he's like, well, you know, you look pretty old, Ahsoka. You don't look like you did. And that was a really good call because when we see the flashbacks with young Ahsoka, she didn't really look anything like Rosario Dawson as Ahsoka. In fact, fact, the actress that plays the young version of Ahsoka is way better. She's way more fluid. All of these things. She is the one who I want to see more of, not so much Rosario Dawson, because Rosario Dawson is just constantly stoic and she shows very little emotion. And she also looks very mechanical and unfluid when it comes to her fight scenes. But then when we look at young Ahsoka, she looks like she's actually in training and she's actually learning how to be a Jedi. But I guess that really is the whole point that after Anakin departs and becomes Darth Vader, Ahsoka loses is her master so she doesn't have anyone to teach her. She not only stops progressing as a Jedi, but in fact, 
she starts regressing. After Anakin sits there and says, hey, here is your final lesson. You live or you die, let's fight. And they bust out their lightsabers and they're going back and forth. And then after Ahsoka gets molly whopped off of this bridge, then she falls through the clouds and they're on a battlefield. And they're running through this battlefield, reliving some of the battles that they had together and some battles that Ahsoka had alone after Anakin became Darth Vader. And one thing that really stood out to me during this episode, and I thought it was a really good way to open up my mind and to start thinking about some of the things in Star Wars is when we saw the aftermath of one of the battles that they were taking part in, you saw a lot of people who were the clone troopers were kind of on their stretchers and they were getting medical attention because they had either just gotten killed or they were super badly injured and they needed that medical treatment. And the conversation that happens between Anakin and Ahsoka is actually really, really good. And it got me kind of right in the feels a little bit because Ahsoka is sitting there saying, well, I feel like this is all my fault. I'm the one who led all of these people to get injured and get killed. But Anakin has to remind her that just because they're Jedi, they can still make mistakes. And a lot of the decisions that they are forced to make as Jedi, as leaders have a lot of weight because it's not just a flippant decision that you can make and then everything is going to be fine. Your actions as a Jedi can sometimes carry some very serious consequences. And I think oftentimes in Star Wars, it's a little bit missed because if you see a character get shot with a laser gun or stabbed with a lightsaber, those are very fantastical weapons. So sometimes you can't really ground that in reality, but seeing the aftermath of the battle scene where people are actually kind of thrown all about and recovering from this battle was actually super heavy. And I was not anticipating that moment to come where I was kind of like, oh man, this is actually kind of rough to watch because you get to see Ahsoka feeling so bad for all of the people that she not only led, but joined in battle that ended up getting injured and ended up dying. So that was a fantastic narrative to spin. And I thought it was a really good way to put a touch on the reunion of Ahsoka and Anakin during this episode. And one of the things is we do see the battle for Mandalore. And when Anakin sits there, he says, hey, I actually don't really recognize this battle. Ahsoka kind of has to give him a jab and she's like yeah you ditched me and you stopped my training in order to go become Darth Vader and do what you did so this was a battle that I fought without you that's why you don't remember it so that was almost like her way of saying well you left me and just as Anakin had told Ahsoka that there are consequences to their actions as Jedi she was almost reminding him there were consequences to the fact that you became Darth Vader and you left me and you left our training and you ditched the Jedi and you killed the younglings and then eventually we get back to kind of the world between worlds where they're on these platforms and they're not so much on the battlefield and their fight continues and Ahsoka is just getting absolutely owned by Anakin in every which way. She didn't seem like at any point she ever stood a chance until the very end when she just kind of very seamlessly disarmed Anakin and that kind of was a little strange but I did love the fact that we saw Anakin's lightsaber start as Anakin's lightsaber and eventually become Darth Vader's red lightsaber and we also saw his eyes turn from the eyes of Anakin Skywalker to those really piercing red eyes of Darth Vader. And it was almost as if we were noticing that no matter what Ahsoka did with Anakin and the conversations they had and the lessons that they had learned together, Anakin will turn to the dark side no matter what. But eventually Ahsoka does live and she's rescued. She comes out of that kind of space between life and death that she was just experiencing. And then she says, it's time to go save Sabine, track down the baddies, let's go get them. And of course, how are we going to do this? She is going to go talk to the space whales. So now at this point, we have been introduced to so many different things that the force can do. The force can push. The force can have lightning. The force can heal. The force can talk to animals. And in itself, we can all kind of sit there and think, okay, well, that just means that to be a Jedi, you really unlock a lot of things that the force has to offer. But once again, they also said that anybody can be a Jedi and anybody can use the force if they just train well enough. That's one of the big things that I had an issue with early on in the show. And then because Ahsoka can talk to the space whales telepathically, they get in the mouth of the giant space whale and they just take off into the next galaxy to go save some Bean and defeat Thrawn. So like I said off the top, we kind of had a a bad good sandwich. The beginning of the episode was bad. The middle of the episode was really good. Very thought provoking, hit right in the feels, had the nostalgia loved it. And then the end of it just goes right back to how stupid the Ahsoka show can be at times. <laughs> it's like, come on. But anyhow, season one of Ahsoka is an absolute roller coaster. It's great sometimes. It's 
god awful the others. So we have a couple episodes left. We're just gonna have to ride it out and see if it is as enjoyable. My call is that Ahsoka at the end, she's just gonna straight up die and they're not gonna have Ahsoka any longer. And then the next series is gonna be Sabine and it's gonna be Ezra trying to fight and kill Thrawn. But that's just my prediction. I could be wrong. But anyhow, thank you very much for joining me here on the Gramcast. If you're still with me, please like the video. It helps so much. Subscribe to the channel. I would love for you to join me in the future. But seriously, take a moment and comment down below what you thought about not only this episode, but Ahsoka so far. Because I can sit here and I can sit at home and I can watch every single episode of Ahsoka. But the thing that makes Star Wars truly special is the discussions that we have together. So comment down below what your thoughts are. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me. I will catch you on the flip flop. Yeah.